Okay, so we have a sliding surfing Robbie and a camera that follows Robbie. So the second part of this step is to extend and add more functionality to our camera rig. Currently, it's kind of basic, and it just follows Robbie around. What we want to do is we're going to add some more functionality for two things. One is, remember we collected orbs when Mike played the game earlier on? There's like a subtle screen shake, a little uh, camera shake that happened. We're going to set up for that. We're going to deal with that later, but we're going to set that up now. The other thing is to also clamp the camera within an area. Because often in games, you have stuff rendered off screen or like, you know, out, outside of where you want the player to see. And currently, we have this problem here. So as Robbie goes to like the edge, we have like all this black darkness here, the shadowy area you must never go. And then you also have some elements like when we go towards this door at the end, hey, look, we have all this rendered off screen door type stuff here. So you might have some elements that are slightly out of view that you don't want to be seen. Especially also if you fall, like into a bottomless pit of nothing. So Cinemachine can solve this, because Cinemachine has a extension in it called the Confiner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Cinemachine rig with all these sliders and buttons and toggles. I'm going to down to the very bottom. We have this section called Extensions. If I open up this list, we've got these different extensions which go on top of this rig. And you can combine them and mix them, and they do different things. And the two that I'm going to add is this Cinemachine Confiner. We're going to confine the camera to a certain area of our, our game, or our game level. And the, and the other one that, and you notice it automatically adds a little component for the Confiner with a warning. And the other one I'm going to add just purely now is the Impulse Listener. And if you've done audio before in Unity, like you have the audio listener listening out for audio sources that are play audio somewhere in the scene, like the listener is your ears and the source is playing somewhere, the impulse listener works the same way. You have the impulse listener listening out for an impulse taking place, and then you have impulse sources that we're going to place later on. But purely for time's sake, we're going to add this to the rig right now. Now, if you might be thinking to yourself, I've never seen this impulse uh, conf or, uh, extension. I've never heard of these impulses. Just an FYI, this landed in Package Manager yesterday evening, and it will be announced tonight, so don't tell anybody. But just a little inside information for all of you here, uh, you get a little sneak preview of something that is absolutely, as of yesterday afternoon, completely brand new. You're probably, so, you're probably the first people to ever use this outside of Unity. Yeah. Like, which so is this is completely cool. This impulse is going to be super cool, you're going to see, but don't tell anyone. Uh, yeah, definitely don't take recorded. a screenshot right now, <laughs> or a photo. Yeah. Wow, no one did. Normally, when you say don't photo this, everyone always photos it. So oh, we got a guy with a camera set up right there just recording everything. So. Oh, yeah. cheers, buddy. <laughs> OK, so we've got this Cine Machine Confiner in this Impulse Listener. And I'm just going to leave this Impulse Listener. We're going to come back to it like later on after lunch. Don't worry about it just yet. So the Cine Machine Confiner is going to ask for a bounding shape. It's going to ask for some kind of area that you set up that it keeps the camera inside. Purely for time's sake, underneath the levels folder, we've already set up a camera B, which is camera bounds, and this has a collider on it. When I add this to the scene, you'll notice that it creates a green sort of like collider area, this little green box. If I now go back to my Cine Machine camera and go to this confiner, it's asking for a bounding shape or a collider. Now when I assign that into here, you'll notice that the camera instantly pops, and it now stays within this area. Kind of like where you have games with different rooms, you don't want the camera to go outside the room, so you sort of set up this room as kind of the bounding or confining area. And if I go into play mode, you'll notice something that really cool happens. So automatically, without any code, you'll notice that the camera will always be within, it's kind of like trapped, and you'll notice that the camera won't follow Robbie everywhere he goes, only sort of within this zone, so you see, Robbie, you have a little bit of leeway, but you see, as I fall off here, the camera's kind of stuck, and it's just wanting to follow Robbie where he goes, but it's, it's, it's in this area. This is good. It's confining. This is exactly what we want. However, our level is a little bit bigger than just this platform, and I don't know about you, but I don't really want to play a game where I can't actually see where my player is going. So that's why, with the camera bounds selected, you'll notice here that on the Polygon Collider for the camera bounds, we have an Edit Collider button. And when I turn this on, you'll notice that in the scene, 
can actually grab the points of this collider and specify the exact area. So we have got quite like a square level. So I'm going to set up a, a box. But if you have like a level that's a corridor, a level that goes up and down, you can set up the sculpt, the collider for where your camera is going to uh, be within. You can set up the bounds. So I always, I always forget. Is it like just here? Yeah, it's about there. About there, and then about here. Yep. And then this, I think, is down here. And it's not exact one. science. You can also click in the middle of a line to create a new vertex point to create a unique shape, as he was talking about. So maybe you want the camera to dip down there or be able to flare out or whatever. It doesn't have to be a box, and, and you could just click to create these keyframes. If you create a vertex that you don't want anymore, you can hold down Control or Command. It'll turn red, and then you click it, and that removes it. Um, another thing to note too, that polygon collider, the, the camera balance prefab you brought in, one other thing that was set up on there automatically is that the collider is set to a trigger so that you don't physically collide with it. You don't want your player hitting some wall in midair that's invisible. It's a trigger. It's not going to physically stop the player, but it will stop the camera. So something like this is, okay, obviously you've all got completely different levels, so you're probably going to have to drag it out bigger or smaller. I've seen some pretty exotic uh, stuff is probably the best way I can that's put good. it. Um, so for this setup, uh, this is fine for this level. One thing to point out is it doesn't confine the frustrum. It just confines the body of the camera. So this camera edge here, or this camera sort of like location, is what it actually confines. So you'll notice that it doesn't confine the frustrum. It just confines the actual camera body, the source of the camera. So you'll notice here, this actually is pretty OK here. Let's uh, test level. And this is obviously where testing comes in. You notice here, that's just clamping. So if I jump here, you'll notice it's not rendering stuff off screen. If I jump over here, you notice it's not, you know, Robbie can go into the darkness. Don't go into the Don't dark, Robbie. Don't go into the darkness, Robbie. Yeah. You have so but much to live for. But it's not rendering that bit on the side. Think of the orbs. And depending how you, oh, and you notice we also have that dip. So the camera actually dipped very slightly because we have this very slight dip here. And of course, when Robbie jumps off the platform, you know, he's gone. So using this confiner, we can confine the bounds. It's super cool. I remember having to write so much code beforehand to clamp the camera, and now it's like, hey, you just add this component. And yeah. I wish I could go back to me eight years ago and just say, wait eight years. Well, don't wait eight years, but uh, <laughs> do yeah. nothing for eight years. Yeah. Then use Cinemachine. Yeah, that's uh, moral <laughs> of the story. So in this step, it's actually super basic. So what I did is I went back to this player follow cam. Go down to the drop list, uh, the drop down list of the extensions, and added the Cinemachine Confiner and the Cinemachine Impulse Listener. That's just set up later. The Confiner then asks for a bounding shape or a polygon collider 2D. Oh, and just to point out, if you use like a 3D camera rig, then you'll have like a 3D collider space. So it works. There's a 2D version. Well, there's no, a 2D camera rig and a 3D camera rig are the exact same thing with just some settings changed. You can see here on the confined mode, because it was a 2D camera, the confined is a confined 2D. If it had been a 3D camera, it'd be confined 3D. But you can use 3D confinement on a 2D camera, 2D confinement on a 3D camera. They're all 3D. Yep. Then dragged in the camera bounds purely for time's sake. It's just a game object with a collider trigger so we don't walk into invisible walls, because that would truly be a uh, very difficult game if yeah. you have invisible walls. Then edit the collider. It's not an exact science, just sort of drag it out roughly and obviously iterate and play and play with it. And if you build more level, you know, drag out the collider a bit more. But the most important thing is to go back to your Cinemachine camera and make sure it's pointing at that camera bounds. Otherwise, it's not going to clamp at all and not going to confine it at all. So, and remember to save. So switching back to the slides. There you go. There you go.